I have arrived. Alright, so, streaming. Been a little while, huh? So, let's see. What do we need to go over before we get into things? What is the business today? Let's see. Okay, so, Arc Knights. Playing Arc Knights tonight. Um, no Arc Knights. I think I've said it enough. Anyway. <laughs> I think when was the last time I streamed on my own? Probably, probably not as far back as I'm thinking, actually. Now that I give it some more thought, but it has been a while. It's been a while since I've done any streaming-related activities, in particular. And I am somewhat inexpert with navigating the various functions of my computer as a result, or the various functions of my setup as a result, because my I should say, yeah, setup because it makes use of two com computers. And it's very, very complicated, far more so than it maybe needs to be. But I don't know any particular way it could be made much simpler. So we simply live with what is available to us. Anyway. So tonight, we're playing Arc Knights. Um, I believe I have stated previously <coughs> I have stated previously that currently that is going to be our main game of focus. So, Tales of Arise is currently not, I wouldn't say on a hiatus, but it is being deprioritized in favor of Arknights. So, if I have to choose between streaming one or the other on any given week, then I will be streaming Arknights. Yes. So, other than that, the ongoing VA11 Hall A Cyberpunk Bartender Action collab with Sheppy Sheps will be continue to be ongoing, basically. Yes, that will continue as as it has been. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, right. So the date for that, or the day for that, the day of the week for that, uh, will be changing. I believe we have decided on Wednesday is going to be the new day, because Thursday is not going to work work for Sheps the way that it used to. So yeah, going forward, that collab will be on Wednesdays. I should probably double check this real quick. I feel reasonably confident in saying it, but I could always be more confident. So why not? Yes, so... The ongoing... Oh, I have to log into my Discord account because I've not used this computer in such a while. Hmm. Let's see. Alright, you know what? We will... I feel confident enough that I don't feel a tremendous need to double check. We're going to assume that this is correct. And if it is not, I will correct it at some later point. Yes, I do not want to be delayed too much longer on Arc Knights, because I am very much looking forward to it. Sit. Yes, so. What else is there to say? Yeah, I've been on break. I've been on a vacation. Yes, a proper trip to a distant land. Perhaps not all that distant, still within the same country, but yes, it has been quite the adventure. I scaled dunes, I traversed a mountain, I guess a couple of mountains, yes. I entered a cave, I ate pizza several times, I read part of two books, and the entirety of one book, actually, yes. I rode a horse, I learned how to chop firewood, and I taught a man how to, how to cook an omelette, and... Let's see. Oh, and I, I saw a movie. Which is perhaps the most remarkable part of all. Yes, anyway. Um, yeah, the movie was good. I watched the, the new Spider-Verse movie, Across the Spider-Verse. I quite liked it. And, well, yeah, I won't, I won't speak on it too much because I don't want to spoil anyone, of course. But yes, very good movie. I highly recommend it. So yes, so, let's see, that is more or less what has happened recently with me. Yeah, I was thinking of, at one point, doing a stream to 
yeah, showing some of the pictures that I took on my trip, but I haven't had the opportunity yet to go through and check, you know, which ones are, or to, I guess, curate a collection of images that would not potentially uh, <laughs> reveal compromising information about myself from this trip. So that is currently not a high priority, basically. Yes. So I might do, might go ahead and do that one of these days, but uh, like I said, I have not had the time to do that yet. Yeah, I had intended originally to start streaming earlier this week. I had intended uh, yesterday, as of a few days ago, in fact. But unfortunately, yesterday was a particularly grueling day for me at work. Yes, this whole week has been particularly, particularly troubling. Well, troubling is a strong word for it. But it has been exhausting. Because we have been working on a major undertaking at work, in short. And I was very, very tired. <laughs> very tired and rather sore also, following yesterday's work. And so I had to wait until today. I still did work today, but I didn't work as much. So yeah, so I suppose on that note, I'm also, my work schedule is going to be changing soon. Yeah, I don't think it should have any significant impact on streaming. Yeah, I should be able to stream basically with, at the same times that I always did, but yeah, it may change the days a little bit, and well, I don't know, it probably won't have that much impact. Yes, I will, I should be able to make time to stream at the usual time, as per usual. My schedule just will have to be a little bit tighter, just in my personal life. Yeah, so once again, this is not necessarily a full return to full streaming. Yeah, like I like I have said before, I don't necessarily intend to go back to the four day a week streaming schedule immediately. Yeah, that will have to be have to be a long term goal, and possibly might not be something that we return to for a very long time indeed. Because I want to be able to have some more time to work on stream related things other than the actual streaming itself. So yes, so once again, I will reiterate, I intend to stream at least one, hopefully more, but at least one of, you know, solo stream each week. As, you, as well, I will continue the collab streams with Chevy Chefs, and so yes, the collabs, as I stated, will be on Wednesday, should be at the usual time, 8.30pm Central Time, roughly assuming that we get everything sorted out by then, which is not always 100% the case. Yes, everything should be at the usual time on a new day, and these streams, these streams that I do on my own, or I suppose, you know, I could do a collab one of these days, but, you know, other than the usual collab, yeah, I cannot guarantee any specific day, I'm still trying to decide what days will work best for me, what days will be most, uh, what days will work best, I suppose. So, all that is to, yeah, all of that is to say, I don't have a whole lot to say. <laughs> so yeah, once again, everything will, I will just have to update you as things happen, basically. Dreams will happen when they happen, and they will be posted when they are posted. I suppose as a... I have a whole lot to say here, actually. I should have taken some time to maybe write down what I wanted to say ahead of time so I had a better idea. But, uh, topics are just coming to me one after the other. So yes, on the topic of posting about the updates and about the stream and all that, I, a while back, I did, I actually made a Tumblr account for this for this stream to keep up updated on, yeah, the same way that I currently use the Twitter account. I have not used the Tumblr account in any real capacity as of this point. I intend to do so in the not too distant future. But yeah, I'm still getting, working on getting that set up to a certain extent, and I don't know. I don't want to be negative necessarily, but Twitter's uh, 
status is somewhat precarious, I feel. So probably I'm going to start working on the Tumblr account a little bit, with a little bit more haste than I have been. I have been un feeling no particular compulsion to work on it recently, but I feel like I might want to get around to that. It's not as though I use social media extensively anyway, so it won't be too much of a, of a difference. Set. Alright, so I think that's basically everything that needs to be set. Yeah, there are some other things, I suppose, but honestly, I just kind of want to get into the game. <laughs> so, we may save them for after the bulk of the gameplay, or we might save them for another day. Yeah, I suppose as one additional comment before we start on Arknights, typically, in the previous Arknight streams, I've had a little presentation, I suppose you could call it, after the end of the stream where I talk a little bit about you know, Arknight's character designs, Arknight's lore, mostly just characters really, but yeah, I had a little section after each stream dedicated to that. I don't have a topic prepared for today, so we will be omitting that section. I did have a thing that I wanted to briefly touch on, but again, since I'm a little bit later today than I expected, and since I'm honestly still a little bit tired from the from the work week, I don't necessarily know how much I want to devote to that. And yeah, as a result, this stream might also be a little bit shorter than expected. Yes. So, <laughs> now that I've said all that, I think that we're more or less ready to begin. So, why don't we begin? There we go. Everything is working. When you, have, when you haven't streamed for like two to three weeks, it really doesn't, you don't expect things to just work sometimes, but I did put in a little bit of effort beforehand, making sure that things would work. So yes, so I suppose to reiterate, once again, I have played Arc Knights before. I've been playing it for a little while, but I didn't get really into the depths of the story. Ah, the game audio is still disabled. Yeah, I had, I had some issues with that. I had some issues with that. First, we had the issue, I had the issue of it not turning on at all. And that was an issue. But now I, now it's present in every scene, even when it shouldn't be. So I may need to investigate that further. But all that being said, yeah, music. We should have music now. If not, let me know. Well, music and other game audio, of course. But yes, so once again, I have played Ark Knights. I have played through this chapter. Yeah, it's a shame the story and lore is very expansive. I know, I know. I love the story of Ark Knights. I love the lore. I love the characters. And I would love to talk about them a little bit more in depth. But again, I don't want to overcommit right now, especially coming off, off of a break once again. But yes. Thank you for dropping by, Punk Disciple 23. And let's see, where was I? Oh yes, so, I played this game before. I haven't gotten too deep into the story, because I wanted to save it for streaming. So yes, I have played through this chapter. I have played through this chapter, and I believe the next one. So it won't be until the third episode that we will be reaching totally un uncharted territory for me. And so I think, yeah, or yeah, I will continue as I have been going through and I will play through each mission. I will do the story before and after, and I will do the mission itself. And I think that's basically all the ground that we need to cover. Yeah, I suppose it would be probably helpful to go over the, the eh, backstory of the game that so far as we have played it. I guess not really the backstory, the story. <laughs> the story so far. So, I suppose to have a great audiobook voice if you're down that path, very good at narration. Thank you. Yes, I have I have heard that a lot. Variations on that. Very good radio voice or narrator voice. Yeah, it's definitely something I try to uh try to strive for. So I appreciate that compliment. So yes, so 
just as a recap for anyone who, you know, hasn't been deeply, deeply entrenched in Arknights in the, oh, it's been, it's been a good long while since I played this game, huh? Yeah, probably, yeah, several months, actually, now that I think about it. Because, yeah, definitely, it would have been at least, yeah, March. March was the last time we played this. <laughs> so, yes. So, and then, in case anyone is not, uh, doesn't remember the story super clearly, yes, we play as the Doctor, Dr. Tiber in this case, who is a neurologist and, and uh, strategist and also an amnesiac, who was recently reawakened from some sort of stasis, some sort of cryogenic state, after being found in the city of Chernobog by Rhodes Island whom we used to work for in some capacity. Yes, of particular note are Amia, our good friend, who is, uh, we'll get more acquainted with later on, of course. Yes, who is sort of our guide of sorts as we get go through this. Sit. Yes, other Arc, er, Arc Knights, sorry. Rhodes Island personnel are also alongside us. We will learn more about them as well as we go. And currently opposing us are two significant factors. The oncoming catastrophe, a massive natural disaster of sorts that threatens to swallow up and destroy the city that we are in, and the forces of reunion, a movement for that originally sort of fought for the, or yeah, was interested in promoting the rights of the infected, those who have who have the disease known as oropathy. Yeah, a movement in yeah, a movement of infected that wants infected rights. Now they have become more. Uh, that's a pretty succinct summary. Yes. Yeah, we do try to avoid spoilers around here. So, try to try not to get too into into details before we get to that point of the story. But yes, that is vague enough that I will let it slide. But yes. Anyway, where was I? Oh yes, reunion. So yes, reunion has suddenly militarized. It would seem, and they are being very aggressive towards the people of Chernobog and towards the. I just realized. Hold on. Something is up with my audio set or my video setup, I think. Oh, no, actually, never mind. Okay, no. I thought I saw something something wrong, but I... Yeah, it doesn't seem to be the case now, actually. Oh, no, it was the case. How far have you progressed in story? Um, so, yeah, once again, I've gotten to the end of episode two, is as far as I have gotten uh, in this... In this particular playthrough, we've just gotten to, we just finished the prologue last time. So yeah, so we are not very far in, not very far into the story at all at this point. Yeah, I have been, you know, avoiding, avoiding spoilers to a certain extent. I've been sort of, yeah, continue your reunion explanation for people who do not know that. Yeah, gotcha. But yes. I suppose I should do that before I get into anything else. Yeah, I don't want to get distracted. I have a tendency to do that. But yeah, so anyway, Reunion has militarized, and they have a number of forces on the ground, just generally not only, you know, fighting the authorities in Chernobog, but also causing havoc on the streets, trouble for the civilians. Trouble is putting it lightly. <laughs> they, there have been some very severe incidents indeed. But we will get into that some more as we progress through the story, of course. Don't want to overstate things too much, because you know, you're here for the for the game and for the story, not just for me talking about it. So that could be that could be fun too. But yeah, so once again, just to reiterate, we are at the beginning of this first chapter. Haven't gotten all that far. So once again, we try to avoid spoilers around here. Try to avoid uh and yeah, as for myself, 
I don't know a whole lot about the details of later later chapters. I've seen sort of the broad strokes, and I'm familiar roughly with most of the events and all that. But again, for the sake of anyone who might not be familiar, we avoid spoilers here. So yeah, I think that's basically all of the preamble that needs to be gone into. So let's play this video game, huh? All right. <coughs> Unfortunately, I don't remember any of the voices I did for any of the characters, so I'll just sort of have to conjure up some new ones, but, uh... Is it just me, or is the sky getting darker? If only it was just you. We never had much time, eh? anyway. The shape of the catastrophe cloud is now more defined than the black haze it was before. <sighs> I don't like the feeling of yet watching it form over our heads. What a bad omen. To make things worse, reunion goons might be lurking in every nook, nook and cranny. Actually, that's probably too conservative. <clears throat> what you've said is they're probably partying on the streets. Or what you should have said is that they're probably partying on the streets. Almost every street is filled with destruction, violence, and looting. Vehicles and buildings are being set on fire. But these thugs decide that it's the perfect weather for a picnic. If they're going out on a picnic now, it's the catastrophe that will feast upon their bones. This proves that most reunion members are just fools who've been worked whipped into a frenzy. <sighs> Look, they're not really having a picnic. I, I just wanted something to moan about. You don't have to take me so seriously. Oh, you weren't being serious? Wait, you were, try were you trying to crack a joke? Hmm. Sorry, I'm not good with this stuff. Um, it's fine. It's just that trying not to laugh is hard. I'm sorry for trying to make a joke at such a serious time. It's okay. Roach Island wasn't founded for the sake of having everyone keep a serious face. You've always wanted everyone to be able to smile. Anya. Don't worry about it. In any case, let's help out with the scouting. I'll quietly dispatch the enemy at our four o'clock. Hopefully the diseased organs won't explode or be rigged to serve as some kind of alarm. We'll wrap around and take care of the large group on the other side of the fortification. With this much chaos around us, nobody will notice a little more noise. All right, let's move out. Yes, once again. I'm using a different different team from my usual one. Mostly just sort of a few characters that I haven't leveled up that I was interested in. We do, of course, have Amia here, who is fairly leveled up. Yeah, most of the most of the fights that you will see in this early part of the game are really quite easy. None of them are too particularly challenging at this point. We'll get into more challenging content later. Yes, now I'm, now I'm sort of... It's been such a long time that I did kind of forget what my strategy is and what the majority of my units do. I know that, yeah, Cantabile here only generates deployment points, which are what we use to place our units on the field. Yes, only the only generates deployment points while she has an aura around her like that after being deployed, or shortly after being deployed, I should say. Yes, Wild Mane here is not quite the same. She just has a small buff after she is deployed. Yeah, so as you can see, the level recommendations can be a little bit not super super specific. Like most of our units here, in fact, all of our units that are deployed, I think. Or no, not Cruz. Cruz is high, higher level. It says that she's level 1, but that is because she is uh, level 1 after being promoted. But yes. Once a character has been promoted, their level is reset to a certain extent. Or, you know, it's not reset properly, but it shows a lower number than it did before. 
to prevent the numbers from getting too bloated, I suppose. So yeah, so we do have a few characters that are above for first level, but as you as you saw, might have seen, I suppose I didn't linger on it, but <clears throat> the recommendation for this stage was level five, and we're doing pretty good with mostly level one units. Yeah, not much to be said here, so we might as well just speed up, make our way through things a little bit faster. I might actually need to, yep, okay, I was going to say, I might need to actually uh, put some thought into things because uh, one of my units was getting low there, but oh well. Might as well wrap things up faster with a little bit more damage. There we are. Yet another, yet another stage. Thinking in Arc Knights? I know, it's hard to believe. Hard to believe. But, it might just work. Sit. <clears throat> Time, unknown. Weather, unknown. Visibility, poor. Chernavog, Operation Squad E-Zero's location. Dr. Tiber, Rescue Operation, Phase 3. Ah, this planet. Amia, haven't we been here before? You're right. But why has it become like this? It's been totally abandoned. It looks like it was attacked by Reunion. Hmm. Wasn't this Azazel, the clinic for the infected? Yes. Even though they had access to Chernobog's entire underground intelligence network, they still refused to work with us. Back then, it wasn't clear what kind of dealings they, ha they had. Yeah. What kind of dealings they had had with Reunion. If only they had given us some information, or even just a hint. We've been out of here by now. They brought this outcome upon themselves. That's not the entire story. Amya, you were there for the negotiations, weren't you? That cold and arrogant attitude of theirs really ticked me off. You can't blame them. Boss? It's hard for the infected to trust anyone. After enduring so many hardships, who can blame them for becoming jaded and stubborn? I can understand what they did, and I can forgive them. Those who don't protect themselves are easily hurt by others. Moreover, the infected often can't even trust each other. Not everyone is able to stomach the kinds of risks that we take, either. A clinic for the infected? Azazel. They were a black market clinic that only provided services to the infected. Given the social status of the infected, they couldn't openly reveal themselves in public. Some of the infected, not wanting to be thrown into quarantine, are hiding throughout the city, just trying to survive. Azazel was aimed at providing services to those people. They must have rejected Reunion's proposals. Doctor, I previously mentioned that we're all sick, right? This disease will claim our lives, but it also grants us with extraordinary powers. For example, I can use Originium Arts without the aid of a staff. However, this disease does not only destroy our bodies, it also destroys any chances we have at living a normal life, or rather, civilized society strips everything away from us. Chernobog has been the shining beacon of this civility. Fearing, hating, exiling, purging the infected. And this is how it ends. The only thing is, how many infected were even given the option to choose between us, Reunion, or some other organization? Most of them simply lost everything. Perhaps this clinic was a warm place that some of them could call home. There is no cure for oropathy, at least right now. The infected can only die in despair, and their bodies become new sources of infection. With their abnormal powers and fatally infectious disease, the infected are the most hated people on this planet. Doctor, you probably won't be able to understand everything just based on my, upon my brief explanation, but when you see the consequences of these problems with your own eyes, you will understand. You'll see the harsh reality surrounding the infected. 
Rhodes Island emphasizes equality for all, whereas Reunion is fanatically infected-centric. However, organizations like ours are a rare sight. I can understand why you're angry, but it's hard not to sympathize with this little clinic. I see. Perhaps they really ended up facing a bigger crisis than they could handle. In any case, we should leave our anger behind, along with this clinic. Rhodes Island is filled with good people, though fear and hostility might create rifts between people. I believe that all misunderstandings will be resolved, as long as we're part of the same family. Perhaps Rhodes Island is but another as Azal. Amia. Let's go, Doctor. So, yeah. So, getting into some topics that we talked about a little bit there before. So, yes. Once again, I believe... I don't remember if I decided whether to do the tutorial stages or not. It really... I don't know. I think they do have some, you know, character moments, but I don't think any of them have any dialogue that I would consider strictly necessary at this point. I might go back through and look over them again in my in my free time. But for right now, I think we're going to skip any tutorial stages and just do the just do the normal stages. <coughs> time unknown. Weather unknown. Visibility four. Chernobog, Operation Squad E Zero's location. Dr. Tiber Rescue Operation Phase 3. We have less than an hour left. We can't afford to make a detour. The more time we waste, the more likely we are to get caught in the catastrophe. We must directly cut across the area. However, we won't be able to conceal our movements anymore, given the size of our forces. The possibility of getting ambushed when we're navigating through narrow streets is very high. What's the plan? We don't have many options. Dr. Tiber, what's your assessment? Hmm. Let's see. They can't stop us, probably. Probably. They don't seem to have built any fortifications. If we're able to charge through their blockade, even though it looks like they have a numbers advantage, their loose formation won't be able to stop our advance. Sounds good. We'll storm them, disrupt their formation, destroy their firebase, and then fall back quickly. Doberman, are you testing me, or...? It's far easier to deal with threats we can see than be stuck between a rock and a hard place. I take it that these are Dr. Tiber's orders, Amia? The situation is clear. I trust Doctor's decisions. Trust isn't built so easily from just a single battle. I do think highly of Dr. Tiber, Amia. But don't let your guard down. Of course, there is nothing wrong with learning from the Doctor's wisdom, but remember, you can't fully rely on anyone else in this world. I know. Don't get me wrong, Doctor. I'm not trying to make things difficult for you. But I hope you understand. Amia still needs to learn and grow. If you were in my position, you also wouldn't allow her to rely on someone else. However, know that I've already acknowledged your abilities as a commander. Thank you. Also, there's no reason to be so formal. We're comrades in arms now. At least on the battlefield. I've already entrusted my life to you. Enough of the chit-chatting, though. Let's hurry it up. That's right. There's an old saying in Kazimierz. Death catches up to you when you stop to take a break. All right. So, let us proceed without hesitation. So, yes, so I'm starting to... starting to recall a little bit more about what units I have picked and what they do to a certain extent. So yes. I went over went over the different types of units and their various what's the word I'm looking for? Their various properties before. Not in any tremendous detail, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, I am definitely regretting not being a little bit more organized. Yeah, now that I'm now that I'm making discussing things again. I didn't want to delay delay starting up Arc Knights again, though. I wanted to get back into things as quickly as I could. And again, I probably could have 
and should have uh, been a little bit more mindful of things, but oh well. It is what it is, and this is an experience for us to learn from. So yes, so Cantile only generates deployment points for a short time, but it can still be useful on the field as a source of damage, of course. Now we'll place Pure Stream back further because she has a pretty wide range on her. Give more space for more units to be deployed, including Durin, who we did speak, speak about last time, alongside the rest of her squad. Yes, we will likely want to deploy Neural here. Now, now that I think about it, we could have also put uh, Doberman in our squad to make things even more appropriate. I don't think I will necessarily go back in and do that right now, though. Hmm. You know, I've never used Robin before. Never used Robin before. I know broadly what she is capable of, but only, only very broadly, indeed. This should be... Oh, uh-oh. Don't want to let any enemies through if we can avoid it. All right, Wild Mane can leave now. <laughs> she has done her job. And all right, we've got we've got this settled, I think. There we are. Very good, very good. All right, another mission under our belt. That was a little, tad bit more challenging, but not tremendously. There's that thinking in Arknights again, if you can believe it. <clears throat> Charge! Huh? Who's there? Where are you looking? Take this. Ah! Uh. <sighs> Yoon's forces are regrouping behind us. They're getting ready to attack. They can't keep pace with us. Keep charging. We're almost out of reunion control territory. Don't stop moving. These trifling thugs can't hope to stop us. Sit. Yes, we're making pretty good pace here. And I know the first two streams were pretty slow. We're making decent pace here. <sighs> we finally lost them. If we keep up the pace, we'll be out of the central region shortly and arrive at the southern exit. It's starting to get noisier and more chaotic. It might be because the Chanabog civilians trying to evacuate the city are running into reunion. <sighs> Seems like a few districts have already been vacated. But those who didn't make it in time are now being held up by a reunion. Hmm. This place used to be a magnificent, sprawling plaza. Now, it's been reduced to ruins. The city is tormented and infected. To meet their end this way is almost poetic. Almost. You seem quite sentimental. Perhaps, at one point. The sky is getting even darker. Even the air has the smell of something burning. What are you doing? Uh, huh. <sighs> Civilians? I can't hear anything anymore. We can't tell who they are from this distance. How? <sighs> oh. Union is attacking them. We can't leverage the terrain to our advantage here. We don't have the capacity to save everybody. Life is very precious, Amya. Each and every one. Regardless, we're already too late. After all, we're in for some trouble ourselves. We can't catch a break today. Kill them all. Large number of reunion forces are, are coming through the exits. Get ready to fight our way out. Let us indeed. 
All right. Yes, pretty straightforward this stage. Literally and figuratively. Let's see. I think probably. Yeah. Well, again, we're at a pretty early stage in the game, so it doesn't matter too much. I was thinking about uh, what what position I would want to put each of my each of my characters in, but again, I don't think it's a matter of any grave concern. Yes, of course, we do have a flying enemy here. I believe. Ah, Altariana. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome in, Potato Rado. Hello, hello. Hi, hi, all. Yeah, it has been a while, huh? Yeah, it is good to see you again. Yes, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for bringing everyone with you. Yeah, as you can see, we were just in the middle of some Arc Knights, and we will resume the Arc Knights. Yes, how are you doing today, hey all? What have you been up to? Yeah, I thought about uh, stopping by your stream, but I would... Didn't have enough time, unfortunately, before before I had to get started on my stream. Yeah, like I said, it is good to see you again. Yes, we'll deploy, whoops, we'll deploy Nero here. And once again, place down some more units to end the fight a little bit faster. <coughs> yes, I think your stream should be able to, yes. Handle all of our melee units. Likewise, good to hear. Good to hear. But yes, I don't believe there are any enemies in this mission that are ranged that we would have to worry about. So, our well, actually, no. Yeah, we've got the. We do have some Molotov throwers, but I don't think they're in range of. Uh, I don't think they're in range of any of our units that are not in the healing area. Data Rado. Yes. Thank you. Welcome in, Rim5885. Welcome in, Nazumi. Yes. Things are... Oh, no, we do have... Okay. So we do have Molotov throwers, but they will be eliminated pretty shortly here, so it's not a grave threat. All right, there we go. Oh, yes. So, uh, where, where was I? Yeah, like I said, oh. How have you been? How how was your stream today? What were you what were you playing? Yeah, I just just saw that you were streaming. I did not uh, did not see what you were streaming. Hmm. Interesting. I don't see the. I guess this this uh mission maybe doesn't have story attached to it. Salmon run. Ah, gotcha. Right, right, right. I have seen I've I've seen that you have been streaming that recently, but I did not uh. Yeah, once again, I was in a bit of a rush, so I didn't see what uh, what you were streaming today. Yeah, once again, as the purpose of this stream is to go through the story of this game, largely. Or no, I think... Yeah, I'm pretty sure that this... Yeah, the, the icon of this on the map, as it, as it were, makes me think that this is a significant mission so i feel like i want to go in and yeah go in and play this one yeah they got a good grisco weapon rotation now so i'm trying to get maximum rank okay so okay so grisco weapons as in they have uh the special weapons in currently yeah i will i will admit i have not been keeping up with uh haven't been keeping up with uh splatoon 3 for a good while now I'm trying to think. It's yeah, it's definitely been a, a long time since I played Splatoon three. I'm trying to remember the last Splat Fest I was a part of. Yeah, same. Last time I played month was months ago for a, a big run. Hmm. So yeah. So since the difficulty is ramping up a little bit, I'm gonna take the take the opportunity to upgrade our squad a little bit. I don't think we've been over the upgrade system before, but. There are there are a few different ways that you can make your units more powerful. The first and most relevant is through leveling up. So we're going to 
I think the recommendation is 10, so we'll go up to 10. Why not? Yeah, it used to be the... What's the word I'm looking for? The interface for doing this used to be a little bit more... A little bit more uh, unwieldy. It used to be a little bit more unwieldy, so it's nice that they made it somewhat more convenient now. And so yeah, so now you can see Cantavile here has gone from level one to level ten. Yeah, you don't get you don't get levels on characters through uh, if having them. Oh no, I said earlier that Cruz had been uh, promoted, but actually she has not. Anyway, you don't get levels on characters through having them participate in fight participate in fights or anything. You get levels on characters by using these. Uh, Items. I was expecting it to show me the name of them, but uh, um, I don't remember what they're called. But they are basically, you know, experience items. They give you a certain amount of experience, and then you use that experience to level up. And you can choose what level you want to go to. You can't go down levels or anything like that. So once you have upgraded a unit, they remain upgraded permanently. Yeah, which is part of the reason why I haven't invested too too much time in this game. Because I didn't want to get, you know, any of my units too high level that I wouldn't have too much of a that I wouldn't have as much of a challenge in these story in the story mode. Granted, there are enough units in this game that I probably could have had a you know, a team of higher level units that I did later gain content with and then just, you know, gone through back through with some of the unupgraded units, but oh well. Yeah, I had thought that, I had thought that Cruz here had been uh, promoted at some point, but uh, as it turns out, I've never even leveled her up. And so since we're talking about promotion, we'll go over it a little bit. So promotion is the sort of, sort of a milestone. Once a character reaches the maximum level that they can reach within a given promotion level, in this case for Cruz, it is 40. Yeah, once Cruz reaches level 40, she can't level up anymore. And then she needs to be promoted. Yeah, upon promoting a unit, they will become more powerful. Their level will go back down to 1, but, but that's basically just a visual thing. Their stats don't go down or anything like that. Yeah, so a promoted unit typically costs more to deploy. As you can see, DB costs plus 2. Maximum attributes increased. Okodaya, indeed. Or no, I should do I should do a proper Coco Dio. Coco Dio. There we go. But yes. So essentially their level will go back down to one, so you can level them up again. Their stats will remain the same and all that. Their deployment point costs will go up. So it can be useful to keep a few less promoted operators on on standby so that you can uh, deploy them faster and easier. But yes. For certain units, in particular range units, the tiles that they can attack on, or the tiles that they can attack, rather, uh, tiles that they can target, I suppose I should say, uh, will change, typically becoming larger. I guess, I don't think there are any units that, that get fewer tiles by, by being promoted. Yes, in Cruz's case, she also gets a new talent. Yeah, you can click on the this little preview icon to see a little bit of what uh, happens when you promote a unit. So yes, and then you can see your unit's talents down here. So yes, so that is a brief overview of promotion. So one of the bigger things that that separates higher rarity units from lower rarity units is that higher rarity units can be promoted more basically um so yeah so a low rarity unit i suppose let's go and uh pull up one of our a4 uh a4 team members i guess Duren's the only one that we have on hand so Duren here cannot be promoted Duren will never be promoted unfortunately she is in a dead end job but I don't know, I guess there's not really an upside to that. She is easy to level up, but there's not really a whole lot else to say about her. 
Yeah, as you can see, her max level is 30, different from Cruz's. Yeah, so I suppose, yeah, the maximum level, both with and without promotion, also changes somewhat with uh, different rarities. And while I'm here, we'll also talk about potential. So this is the system that rewards you for getting duplicates of uh, a given character. Yeah, when you get a duplicate of a character, you will get a token. Each token has a little bit of lore attached to it, talking about the character. In this case, Durin's token is <clears throat> a small originium product made by a Duranese craftsman. Hold it tightly for a while and you will suddenly feel full of energy. But yes, each character will receive a token upon uh, you getting a duplicate of them. You can use those duplicates to unlock higher levels of potential, giving you benefits, as you can see on here. Yeah, so deployment, deployment voice, DP cost down, max health up, redeployment time down, max health up, deployment cost down. And it varies depending on characters. Let's see another one, Melantha here. Yeah, similar, but you can see hers is, gives her, rather than giving her extra health, it just gives her even faster deployment time and it gives her some damage. So yes, so in a lot of, uh, I don't know, maybe, I haven't played a whole lot of other gacha games, so it's a little bit unfair of me to make too many comparisons. But I know that the, the duplicate system in this game is a little bit less impactful than it is in others. So you aren't, you aren't, you know, if you don't get any duplicates of a given character, you generally aren't significantly worse off with them. You know, if you really want to max out a character, then you need to, you know, you don't even need to really get, uh, need to, like, you don't need to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Strictly get duplicates of them because there is a, another, another option. Yes, you can use, uh, sort of non-character specific, but class specific tokens. You can use those to upgrade a character in lieu of their, their own specific tokens, which is especially useful when, with regards to Exusi, yeah. Yeah, I, I like Exusii a lot too. I think I might have mentioned this in a previous stream, but Exusii was the, the very first Arknights character I ever saw, actually. Sip. Yeah, way back before the game was even like, before it was even sure that the game was getting an English re release, I saw uh, an image of Exusii. I saw her like uh, upgraded art and I thought, oh, that looks very cool. You never got her? Well, I might show her off at some point in the near future. You'll get a ch so you might be, get, be able to get a chance to see her on my team. Yeah, Exusia is a lot of fun. I like I like uh, using her. I definitely have relied on, upon her a lot, as you can see from the the trust. Speaking of which, that's another another way that you can upgrade your characters. So, while they don't gain levels or anything else through combat, they do gain trust and through other means as well. You can gain trust in the base as well, but uh, the trust system, as you as you use units, as you interact with units, basically, they will gain trust, which will give them various benefits over time. Yeah, you can see Exusi had plus ninety attack due to trust. Uh, did I just pick catapult? <laughs> catapult had plus fifty five. Let's see, who's another character that I have? some trust with. I suppose I can, yeah, I can sort by trust. Yeah, trust maxes out at 200. I have a whole lot more units with high trust than I do with uh, high levels due to the way that I've played this game. So let's look at one that has relatively low trust. Say, yeah, Schwarz here. Yeah, as you can see, okay, she already does have a, a bonus, I suppose. I don't know the I don't know the the specific thresholds for when you get bonuses from trust, but uh, let's look at Aurora who has no trust. She does not trust me at all. Yeah, I click on this and I get nothing at all. So yeah, I will I wasn't quite sure for a moment there if the yeah if it was just showing me what the when I clicked on the trust uh, section. I don't know. I didn't know if it was telling me 
what the uh, maximum benefits were, or what my current benefits were. But looking at Schwarz, who, or not Schwarz, uh, Aurora, who did not trust me at all. Uh, yeah, I didn't see anything come up. So yeah, anyway. Trust is one, the way that the game rewards you for using a particular unit repeatedly. Yeah, you also get other benefits uh, later on. You get, uh, like, furniture, basically. And certain, certain, uh, I believe there are other mechanics that rely, that are reliant on trust. Another upgrade mechanic, but I don't remember what it is off the top of my head, unfortunately. Yeah. So I didn't really plan on talking about upgrading upgrading units here at this particular junction, but we ended up doing so anyway. Let's go down to 10, please. I suppose 11 or 9 is not really that big of a, of a difference. So yes, upgrade Robin. I definitely, I want to use Robin a little bit. I've been interested in, in seeing her, her particular uh, mechanics a little bit, but I've never, never had the, had the chance to deploy Robin before this, I don't think. So I'll, if I can, I will make sure that I use her in this upcoming, in an upcoming battle. I hope this is the, the thrilling, the thrilling gameplay you were expecting when you came into this raid. I suppose I shouldn't, shouldn't dally for too much longer here. And yeah. So when I'm a little bit more organized on some other date, I'll probably go into a little bit more detail about upgrading units. Maybe I'll make that a goal for next stream. Yes, for now, we will be content with simply upgrading our units a little bit and then moving on. And yes, so we should only have one more unit on the team who needs to be leveled. Indeed, we do. Angelina. Who we also haven't deployed, I don't think. Indeed, it is. And indeed, you won't. All right. Okay, so yeah, so this, this is another pretty straightforward stage. Yeah, I suppose, let's see, okay, right. I keep forgetting that Robin has to be deployed on range tiles because she is a ranged unit. So. I'm glad you're aware of what you're doing, Cantabile, because I'm only kind of aware of what I'm doing. Yes, okay. Yeah, so it is broadly what I was thinking. Okay. Yeah, so Robin, once she is deployed, she gives you the ability to deploy these uh, these special units. In, these case, in this case, they're called binding clips. Yes, so those will stop enemies in place for a little bit. They cost deployment points to use, so they are a bit like units in that regard. You can't deploy them onto a tile that has a unit on it, or has an enemy unit on it, I should say. Yes, you cannot deploy them directly on top of an enemy, but you can deploy them pretty freely. There are some other units that have... Uh, the ability to deploy subunits, I suppose you would call them. Yeah, there are some other units that have that ability who are stricter about what you can place and where. For instance, uh, Beanstalk is another character who has a, the ability to deploy a subunit, but her units that she deploys can only be deployed on, can only be deployed on, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? can only be deployed within her attack range. Whereas again, with Robin, you can place them anywhere. The only restriction, again, is how many uh, deployment points you're willing to spend on it. And since I'm, you know, making this effort to use Robin, might as well use a whole lot of them. Yeah, so as you can see there, the flying units are completely unaffected by them. But 
they also don't prevent them from uh, being placed. So I suppose rather than to say they can only be deployed on spaces that don't have enemies on them, they cannot be deployed under an enemy's feet, basically. They can only be deployed if they would not immediately activate. And some of them, some of some similar mechanics might be a little bit different. Oh, that enemy's getting through here, and I don't have a way to stop him, so uh, I suppose we're getting a less than perfect rating on this mission, which is a little bit unfortunate. But it's survivable. Yeah, I believe I've talked about it a little bit before, but you can see there is a an icon at the top of the screen that looks like a rook. And that shows you how many enemies you are allowed to miss, basically. In, that, in this case, we can allow nine more enemies through before we lose. And the icon to the right of it, with the shield and the X and the negative one, uh, is indicating that we have already let one enemy through our defenses. <laughs> so yes, so the, the binding clips each have a... Uh, have a redeploy time as well. You can only redeploy or you can only deploy them so frequently. And they also are generated over time. So you can run out of them. You can run out of them. But I shouldn't be in too too much trouble. Actually, now that I think about it, if I if I had been on the ball, I might have been able to deploy a clip in front of that uh in front of that enemy that passed by us and maybe stop them. But Oh well, it is what it is. At least we got the opportunity to, to try out Robin. Sit. Indeed, they don't know that Faust is following them. I received some information from one of his scouts. Rhodes Island is trapped around the perimeter of the city center. Insects as they might be, they still might take advantage of the confusion caused by the catastrophe to make their escape. Given their understanding of the situation in Chernobog, they could potentially inter interfere with our plans. At least getting rid of us won't do us any harm. Menacing. Chernobog, Chernobog bears, because of you. It's all your fault that us infected became like this. Get lost. <laughs> These people, it's like they're just waiting to die. Why is Reunion going completely berserk? Why are they sending so many members out here now? This makes no sense. There's no reason for them to be defending this place so staunchly. Rhodes Island operators, stand your ground. Push Reunion back and open up an escape route. So that's the Rhodes Island that I've been hearing so much about. <laughs> How heroic. Huh? Falling rocks? At a time like this? Don't stop moving to maintain our defensive line. Something's not right. These rocks are coming from the buildings. What are you talking about? It, it's here! It's here! <laughs> Salvation has come for us. Judgment Day has come. Ah! Ah! <laughs> ah. <laughs> They were crushed by something. Was it one of you who attacked them? Or were they... Dobrin, look! The sky! The sky was dyed a bloody crimson. Boiling dark clouds, tumbling in flames. Don't panic. Keep your senses about you. We can still make it out of here alive if we act decisively. As Terra strips away their voices, the land falls into silence. The titanic originium lowers its head and falls upon the scorched shadow of death. Lula, what do we do next? Perhaps they will be able to survive the catastrophe. Finish off the stragglers. Very well. Even though I figured that reunion would be using the catastrophe to take their revenge, 
I didn't expect them to use it to completely destroy Chernabog. Rather than vengeance, this seems more like a manifesto. Something about the era of the infected, or something like that. Uh, the entire sky is crashing down. Watch out! What's that? Be more alert. Oh. Protect the medic. Hurry and take her someplace safe. Roger. All operators, find cover. All teams, prepare to weather the catastrophe. Yeah. So I suppose beyond just being the, the first Arknights character that I saw, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, Exusii was also my first six-star unit. Yeah, let's see. How much more do we have? Yeah, not all that much for further. I think we should be able to proceed. Let's see. Is this? Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, I think... One six, I'm pretty sure, was the one that we just saw. Yeah, it is. I'm I'm certain of it now. Yeah, as you can see, also when you get to get past one six, you see the background changes. This to uh, demonstrate the vastly, rapidly worsening situation in Chernobog. So anyway, one six. Now that I've reminded myself of my position, let's resume. Oh, yes. So, this is another stage that has a has a slightly different or yeah, it has a new mechanic in it. Roadblocks. So, you can place roadblocks down and they will block the road. Groundbreaking. Oh, yes. The roadblocks can be placed, they can be removed. Enemies cannot interact with them in any capacity, at least I don't think so. They certainly can't in this stage, from what I've seen. <clears throat> but yes, the roadblock will change the enemy's routes. Typically, they will attempt to find the shortest path to your to this blue space that marks where, uh, yeah, to the blue space that is their goal. They will attempt to take the shortest path to it, generally speaking, <clears throat> but the roadblocks will stop them forcing them to re relocate, forcing them to take another route. So yes, now that I've been reminded that I have her on my team, let's deploy Angela. Yeah, Angela here is a supporter. More specifically, she is a, uh, I believe the term for this particular subclass of supporter, if you will, is the D-cell binder. So this is to say that she has the ability to slow enemies down Indeed. But yes. These cell binders are pretty useful. I've I I'm quite fond of them as a as an archetype, so to speak. Let's see, where do I want to deploy? I want to maintain sort of a defensive formation here. I don't know if any enemies are going to spawn that have ranged attacks, but even if so, I think Pure Stream should probably be able to Heal faster than they deal damage, so it shouldn't be a tremendous diff of that. Uh, shouldn't be a tremendous issue for us. So yes, so roadblocks can be placed in can be placed in basically anywhere, not just in the. Or sh I should say they can be placed on melee tiles, not just in those locations as the game pointed out. So you could actually have blocked this path. You could have actually blocked this path with just one. I didn't think of that at the time. But you could have just blocked the, the path like that. Yeah, again, you cannot be deploy you cannot deploy it directly onto enemies. And I believe you also can't place it in such a way that it prevents them from pathing to the goal. Yeah. So if if you could, of course, then you could just place one here and one here and the mission would be over. Because again, they can't do anything about it. Let's see. Enemies are getting through our defenses, so I think I'll deploy another another unit up here. I might as well have might as well have Cantabile back off. 
she's not really reaching her full potential here. Good boy, Robin. Yeah, Wild Mane doesn't have quite the stopping power that Nero does. Doesn't quite have the stopping power that Nero has. So we'll add a little bit of help her way. And we will also deploy our good friend Cruz. And so yeah, a little tactical note here. You can see that Cruz can attack this space directly beneath her. So if you were to place Nero or, you know, whoever, on this space, the, to the left of her, you would have Cruz be, Cruz would be able to cover both beneath her and above her. Of course, she can only attack one target at a time, as is the norm, but, you know, in theory. Like Cantabile, once again, get some, a few de uh, deployment points, but mostly put a little bit more damage on this enemy. He will dispatch her quickly, but, you know, Still do, do some good. Very good. A little bit of thinking there. If you can believe it. I've been saying that a lot today. <clears throat> yes. So we don't have too, too much. We don't have too, too much left to do in this chapter. But, like I said, I am still a little bit tired from this work week, so I think I might just call it here. Or, mm, I don't know, I do want to, I want to keep playing. I don't really want to stop. I don't really want to stop, but I think it would be best to try to be, yeah, to be mindful. Mindful of uh, my energy level and all that. Because not being mindful of that is why I ended up taking, you know, extended unplanned breaks in the past. So it's probably a little bit, it's probably ideal to be in a position where I still want to do some streaming rather than get to a point where I'm so tired that I don't want to stream anymore. Both on an individual stream by stream basis and as just sort of as a general over, overall aim. Yeah, so that being said, we've put in a good, good amount of time here. Not a tremendous amount of time, but like I said, I expect this to be something of a short stream anyway. So, the game audio continues. I'll need to look into that and see why it's present in scenes where it shouldn't be. But, all that being said, now it is the time to wrap things up. So yeah, once again, Normally, I would have, uh, normally I would be logged into Twitch on this computer, and thus would be able to look at who's online so I can raid them, but I am not, so I'll need to go onto my other computer. Anyway, under normal circumstances, I would usually take this time to go into, go into a little bit of detail about characters. I like to talk about character designs and sort of just the characters of Arknights in, in general because that is really what drew me to the game. You know, I already talked about uh, seeing Exusii and all that. But, um, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Anyway, yes. So, I don't have any topic prepared right now. And once again, I want to be mindful of my energy. So, we will call it here. And I see someone is online. Someone whom we haven't raided in a very, very long time indeed. So, if I can get everything to work properly. Uh, there we go. Raid. Actually, no, hold on. First, raid. Before we do the raid, business. So, today has been Arc Nights. Uh, yeah, I guess this marks the end of the, the beginning and the end of this week of streaming. Yeah, next week we should be the, what's the word I'm looking for? Getting all sorts of distracted today. I suppose that's not not uncommon. Anyway, so next week I expect to stream at least twice. One, the usual customary uh, collab with Sheppy Sheps, and then also uh, yes, then another Arknight stream. 
yeah, I'm currently not expecting to do more than uh, more than two streams next week. I will try to get back up to, or I will try to get up to three as soon as I can, but I don't have any plans for the near future of getting up to the four that we that we used to. I think with the way that my work schedule has changed, I think three is going to be sort of the option that we have, or it's going to be the option that I take. Once again, you know, I don't want to reiterate too much. I don't want to make it seem too drastic or anything like that because I, you know, wasn't facing any sort of crisis. But again, I don't want to exhaust myself. So, speaking of chef happy chefs, that is who we are going to raid today. Raid happy chefs. Is that oh right I, it might help if i spell the name properly there we are so raid is set up schedule is not set up uh 8 30 p.m central time wednesday for the collab and as for the uh arc night stream we'll figure that out when it happens so the customary raid message is as always we have arrived and so I think that's everything that needs to be gone over. So, for the first time in, in quite a while, I am glad to be back. I am glad to have been here. I'm looking forward to more Arc Nights in the future. And, you know, the rest of everything else too. <laughs> so, thank you all for being here tonight. I hope that you have had a fine night. I hope that you will continue to have a fine night every night. And I hope that you'll be well the next time I see you. Thank you all very much and farewell. Let us get this raid underway. <laughs>